Hello, Aaron. Okay. First, thank you so much for your patience. I'm extremely grateful. There's no way for me to express how sincerely grateful I am for your patience. Thank you. I have your watch here, and there is the bracelet, which is in a bag. So we are going to look at this one. Yep, it's a nice, nice, nice light piece. Look at that dark honey in that dial. That's what you see in the later ones. Wait, but I'm lying. Here, I just bullshitted my way out. Huh. This one is 72. I normally expect this darker honey color later. But, interesting, I, when I do see the dark, dark honey color, it's usually in a 6000, 6001, 6002, which is what this is. It's original loom. Man, that dial is something. This is a nice watch, buddy. Look at the case. It's funny. You know, all these years ago, a totally original watch like this, guys would be like, well, you know, it's okay. I can get a nicer one maybe or something. You know, and they'd, they'd criticize it and like, this, that's just silly because this is so beautiful. You just, it's getting harder and harder and harder and harder to find anything like this, much less this. Completely original. It's unrestored. I forget. Uh, it's, I don't forget. It's been so many years. Wow, that's pretty. No servicing marks inside the case back. None. Uh, hang on. Yeah, look at the, ooh, wow. Look at the case back seal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, just one second. Let's see now. That's good. Okay, let's see. I want to put some power in the mainspring. This is a nice looking watch. Nice, nice, nice piece. Yeah, and she fires right up. She fires right up. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice watch. Never got any moisture inside. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that nice? I don't think that's real. Mm -hmm. It's looking pretty good. I think it's original. I don't think it's been touched. Uh, it's going to be perfectly. This is going to. This should be an entirely straightforward restoration. So let's not worry about that. Boy, that's a pretty watch. That's just nice. You just don't see them like this anymore. Not with this beautiful pure white loom. I can't believe it's been so long. Okay, well, I'm getting into it, but this should be pretty straightforward. Okay, sir, thank you. Okay, let us begin the disassembly. Let's get this thing apart and see what we find. I know it sounds strange or perverse or whatever, but I love, I love it when watches, when I get watches in like this, when I get to restore a watch like this, when it's got all this grot between the crystal and the bezel. The reason I like that is it means that nobody's messed with it. That's a nice, wow, no, that's a nice watch. Okay, so first things first, let's get this thing apart. There we go. There's our case back. So let's see. Yep, running, ticking along. Okay, 
Let's get that hand out of there. Let's see if I can see where it is first. Oh, good. You ready? It's stuck to the inside of the glass. It's right there. There it is. This right over here where it goes. Oh my god, that dial is beautiful. Wow. Wowie. Hang on one second. Yes. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That is very pretty. Look at how glossy that sweep hand is. And it's just that the, the, the polish shops, the, the dial is perfect, basically. And a little bit of the patina right around the sub-dial, but that's not bad. Okay, so let's, let's turn this off. Click. I don't want to hit that reset too hard. There we go. Good. Look at that. Nice. It's a little off to the... Yeah, that's... it's... the hands set. It just got twisted a little. Wow, that's nice. Well, let me get these dial of hands off here. Okay, ticking along. Uh, balance looks like it's fine. Looks like I have not bad amplitude either. I mean, it's not it's not blasting along, but it's a, it's in it's in pretty good shape. Look at that, just flat. So, let us let down the mainspring. Come on. Okay. Main springs let down. Come on, get off. Mm, why am I doing that? Rotoco exists for a reason. Yeah, so we're running top and bottom, and the chronograph wheel looks fine. And it's clicking over, or no moisture got inside. It's looking pretty awesome, if you ask me. It's a good place to start, anyway. Goodness, I'm hungry. I think it's my problem. Sea bass? I don't know, but dude, I'm working. You're not supposed to be in here right now. I love you, but this is not where you're supposed to be. Dude, I know it sucks, but you need to go upstairs, please. Why? Because you know the rules. I am working. You can't be down here. Well, you're not seeing the video, I don't know. You, Sebastian? That is a Stellar's sea cow, or was. It's an extinct variety of whale. Uh, they were known for being extremely... Ext they mated for life, and they were whaled to extinction. Oh, hey, you got a loose screw here. They apparently were incredibly sweet and kind. And the whalers would nab 
one of the pair and the other one, male or female, would follow along with the whaling ship until the body was gone or fell apart. It was very sad. And then they'd kill the mate. It was just awful. Wow, this thing looks news. New. Look at that. There isn't a single teeny tiny bit of deformation on that bushing there for the minute wheel counter. With resets, that tends to get dinged out this away. Look, flat as a board. Ooh, that is nice. Nice thing to see. I don't know why I just started talking about Stellar Sea Cow. Oh, wait, Sebastian asked me. He's like, what's up with this? Stellar Sea Cow. Very sad. Goodness knows it was so important to get all those whales. There it is. Yeah, yep, that's just a little bit of lubrication that condensed the outside there. My hope is, is that maybe many years from now, long after I'm dead, certainly, the ability to fully recreate extinct animals from DNA would be possibility. That'd be nice. I'd like to see a stellar sea cow, but it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Of course, what I really want to see, but not up close, is um, a terror bird. Those things are great. Darn it. Birds. What were they? Basically, if you if you decided to, the, the, the evolution decided that the world needed more needed to try dinosaurs again. This was I don't know 50 million years ago, and uh, so in South America the terror birds evolved, and they were basically gigantic birds of prey. Imagine a nine foot tall flightless eagle, because that's what they were. But then the land bridge between North and South America uh, connected and all went south. All of the rodents and the rodents and other animals outcompeted the terror birds and ate their eggs, maybe. And that was the end of them. There are no more terror birds. I wouldn't mind seeing a terror bird, but again, they were hyper carnivores, and I would just as soon not be eaten by a giant bird. Come on, stop. 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 Okay, fine. Do it your way if you want to do it that way. Off. There's that screw out. No, actually. Come on. What are you doing? Get out. Out. There. Thank you. Goodness. Wasn't that hard, was it? Okay, I've got to look at the mainspring armor bushing there because I now have jewels for these. Right there, you can see the old S2 lubricant. And there it is. There's the heart of your watch. Chronograph wheel. And we, and we already know it's good. There goes over there. There's your escape wheel. Boop. Okay. Yep. Hey, buddy. I love you, but you know, we had a discussion just a little bit ago about how I'm working, and you know that you're not supposed to be down here when I'm working. Hey, that's a terrible thing. You can't speak to me that way. You don't want to do that, buddy. You get a little bit older. Can't have that happen. I, I'm, I'm four. I, I, I don't want to go. I'm four. I know you're four, but you're making a lot of noise, and you know you're not... I don't make noise anymore. What? You make noise all the time. Yeah, that's really worn. Look at that. It's starting to grind into the metal. Not like sitting in a movement holder. Mm 
Hold on, just, just settle down for me. It's not going to take too long. <clears throat> just get this front ripped apart. Oh, for Pete's sake, really? Okay. You know what? I'm going to punt. Screw you. There you go. Yes. Hold that nice and safe. Let's get that out. Blinky, blinky. There it is. Nice. Yeah, it's early enough that it has a metal um, intermediary wheel. That's that's pretty cool. That's that's an okay thing. Stop that. I want to take this thing apart and then be okay. It's nice you have a straightforward piece like this and you keep talking about one keeps talking about how great it is that it's going to be straightforward and those are the ones that surprise you. But I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Okay, one, two, three, and go out. Let's get this deep dial guard out of here. Yeah, look at how look at how clean. Look at how clean. Yep, there's that metal one versus the later plastic. Oh, I can't even. There we go. Uh, and I remember actually the Canon Pinion center wheel felt okay, but I'm going to have to check them. Day date corrector, right there. Would you come off, please? Thank you. Oops, I forgot to screw. Minute wheel, bridge, got to come out. This transmission wheel. Yep, yippers. Definitely got to make sure we get all that old S2 out of there. Now that I know they were using it. All that stuff out of there. Oh. Come on. Come on. There's that out. There's this. And we go like that. There it is. That goes in there. And there we are, down to your main plate, just like that. I still, I mean, I am also gonna rip apart your main spring here in just a second. Come. There. Ooh, that did not want to open. That's a great sign. 
because these things are snap fits if they're open and closed a lot they start to stretch out but when they hang on like this that's that's good news hey look it's not really even scored inside it really isn't wow this was a low time piece wow yep low time Yeah, look at that. Look at it. Look at how clean that is. Yeah, this really was a low time piece. Pull that mainspring. Let's look at the other part of the barrel. Yep, same deal. Hmm. Crazy. And your mainspring. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. And it's an early style, too. The later ones have a little bit more of a crook, and this, uh, this actually, this section comes up more. There it is, it's a part. Okay, so I'm going to clean it up and I've got to machine it out, lower mainspring arbor board, upper mainspring arbor bushing. Uh, I've got to look and clean peg wood and clean all your jewels. Um, we'll start working on the case here in just a second. And uh, that'll be good. This is a nice watch. Nice watch. Let's see if I can... Well, no, I don't want to strip the case until I have this movement stuff put away. Okay, so we'll come back. Let's drop that balance because it is time. I, I'm not quite out of time. No, I've got a, I got, I think I got a couple hours left. I can probably squeeze out today. Big old storm coming. Well, as we can see, it is, in fact, running. Uh, the gears were really smooth. Okay, let's look now for the important thing. We are going to watch right here to see that finger. I don't know, that finger, it stopped here. I know, I, I looked at this wheel before I ran it through the cleaner, and it held. I mean, I didn't look at it too closely. I didn't really worry about it, but... Let's see if we can push that over without sliding. And it's still running. Oh, look at that. Okay, so it took it a second. So your clutch is slipping slightly. Uh, the operating lever's gap is correct. Mm 
That snaps back to zero beautifully. Getting good amplitude, I think, just from looking at it at a glance and also looking at your hairspring, which is always nice. You can see if the hairspring is jittery or if it's good. So if this thing is kind of half gripping, I can. There's a, there's a chance that I can solidify that, as long as the spring itself isn't damaged. Uh, let's hope that the whole thing's an illusion because I really don't want to have to go back into this watch. That's so nice. Nope, there it is, stopping again. Okay, I'm gonna have to go in and see if I can affect an, a repair on that watch, because she's still running. she goes clicking over so i would say that probably what's happening is that one of the the clutch plate is misaligned it's only gripping on one edge and we're but it's amazing what little deviations will change uh so i'm gonna have to pull this chronograph wheel and i'm gonna have to look at it carefully that's so weird i mean because it held before i took the watch apart and i didn't notice any problems when i was checking it Okay, well, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to stop the chronograph for now. I will be back. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go back in. It's, it's holding a little better. You can see it's pushing over, right? But the finger right here, okay, fine, that pushes over, right? If I do this, if I stop the chronograph wheel cold like that, with the finger portion, the watch should just stop running. And it's not, it's slipping. It's not slipping a lot but it's slipping enough. So I have to go back in here and see if I can repair this to clean up that clearance a little bit and get the plates to grab. If I can't do that, then, if I can't do that, then if it won't tighten up. If I can't get it to hold, we might have to replace that chronograph wheel. Gosh, I hope we don't. I, I, I think it should be pretty okay. Um. I think it should be for me to do my, a very, 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 very light repair. Um, I want to do it. Yeah, because if the if the clutch plate is only gripping on one side like I thought, that's usually a symptom that somebody was having some fun with hard resets, which would also explain why in the world the minute hand counter came off. Because when you do a real hard, hard, hardcore reset on this, hard enough that it'll pop a hand off, uh, that can also damage the spring. See, look, it stopped. It's still running, but it stopped. Yeah, I bet you that's what happened. That's probably what popped off the minute hand. A real hard reset. Clack, and it strained this. It's one of those things that I'm nervous about. So I am going to drop the power on this and get down to business. I gotta strip that apart again. Yeah, so here's the chronograph wheel. Um, in my staking press, I looked at it really super closely. Um, I was correct. Uh, the clutch plate is not connecting on one side. I don't know if it's the top. I, I don't, I'm going to check. But if we do this check right here, this is where I stop the outer gear. And then I just rotate the middle section. The rotating the middle section rotates the entire pinion, which means that I shouldn't be able to do this. It, they should. This thing should stick together. But it's not a huge clearance, and I want to see if I can fix it. I'm going to try a couple different things. Okay, so I tap down the collar just a hair, just a hair, real delicate. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's holding. 
Now we have to get out our handy dandy Seiko chronograph wheel recommended test rig, which is bless Seiko, not done by having a special tool, just by using existing bridges. So I, a long time ago, built up a set of A and B bridges. These are used only for testing, just for testing. But this is the official test, the official test. Let's get this thing out of here, put it down there. Let's put this in here. Okay. Okay, let me hang on. So this is just a section of the watch. This is a, a bridge and everything with levers so we can test it and see if it Okay, fine, it turns. So now what we have to do is actuate the operating levers. This is a little tough because you don't have anything down there. It's not being held straight. Okay, there it is. So now it should, the middle section should be free. Okay, I'm looking at it. It's it does not want to behave. Also, it's talking about a hard reset. Remember too, that this watch looks like it's basically new, but the main sweep hand was not set to top dead center. It was off a little bit like this. And that also happens when there's a hard reset and the sweep hand, if it's hard enough, the sweep hand will flex as it, as it comes back and it can hit the minute hand and then it will bend the tube of the hand as well as doing what happened to this, which I have ascertained. We are looking at the underneath of your chronograph wheel right here. This silver disc, that is the non-moving, the static part of the clutch. Okay, it's not the clutch plate, that's not the thrust bearing. That's the, that's the clutch plate right there. And you'll notice something, it's loose. These pieces, these chronograph wheels, they were made in one piece at the factory. And if they are dead, if they die, there's kind of no way to put them back together. There's, I mean, there's kind of, it's a ton of work, but the problem is you can actually see it. If you look, okay, see the, that, mm, see, look, it's, it's all, wangled it's at a weird angle and it's loose and binding up basically there's no way for me to get it to stay where it is supposed to be it just it just won't it's just flopping around i mean there's just you'd think there'd be a way to get that staked back on there but i am i've i have not been able to figure out a way to make that happen so i'm extremely sorry but we are going to need to replace your chronograph wheel and that sucks for you and me and everybody and the watch, but most especially it sucks for the poor chronograph wheel. It just wanted to live its chronograph wheel life and somebody went wham and did a hard reset on it, a really hard reset, um, probably when it wasn't serviced and we lost the chronograph wheel as a result. So I am gonna replace it. I am gonna try to save your original sweep hand though. Um, I can, in the old days, Seiko's old days, they would simply replace the sweep, um, and that's expensive too. Uh, I don't want to do that, so I want to save your original sweep, but we, we are going to have to replace this thing. It's just, it died. That's, so people ask me, should I keep the chronograph running, or should I keep it stopped? And what I say now these days is, whatever you do, do it, but just do it gently. Otherwise, you don't want to knock anything loose, because that hard reset rammed this thing and knocked the clutch place loose. If I could get it apart, I could stick it back together, but I can't do it. I've tried, but it can't do it. So we got to replace it. So look at that. Isn't that something, huh? 
I only have a few of these left. This watch deserves it, but I only have a few of these left. And they're all going to be gone. get your old wheel back so for fun let's do this so here's the brand new wheel here is your old dead one by the way there's the dead one jerk. Are you in or are you out? Aha! You can see? There you go. Light and clean and fresh. And then we take it off and the whole, the whole thing rotates. So that's exactly what we want. Brand new. So I am going to redo this because that is how we lubricate. That's another thing that we do. We lubricate here, because you want to compress this a little bit so you can get some space under here. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. So no more hard resets, anyone. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. Only reset your watch when the sweep hand is past, couple, couple ticks past top dead center. Okay, let's put this in. Oh, wow, yeah. Actually, hang on. Okay, so here is... There's the new one. So we're going to put an N by that one. And here is the old one. Come on. So we're going to put an O there so we know it's the old one. See, look at how flat the clutch plate is here against the plane of the fourth wheel section versus that one, which is all kinds of wampus. Like the whole thing is jacked up. It's very sad. Okay, so this is going in your watch. This brand new piece going in your watch right now. And you'll get this back and you can play with that. It'll go with the rest of your parts packets. And there it is. Okay, so I'm trying to do this the I'm trying to do basically a hot swap in this thing, and and I'm going to continue doing that. Be right back. Okay, uh, ignore that. That's the old readings from the watch I was looking up uh, before I had to swap out the chronograph wheel. I hadn't even gotten to adjusting it yet before I noticed it had a problem. Uh, so let's see what happens. So now it's with the new chronograph wheel. Well, it's definitely running, which is good. I'm now going to adjust out the beat error and accuracy to a rough first adjustment. Uh, unfortunately, as usual, I can't... That wiggle was for me moving this. Unfortunately, I can't um, show you and do this, but I can talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to do... Notice we have beat error 1.2. That's why we have these two lines right there. We don't want two lines, we want one. But note though, how nice and clean the signal is. Gosh darn it. So, that's a good start. But first I'm gonna get rid of that beat error. 
I am thinking I gotta come this way a hair on this stud. See if I'm right. Oh no, I'm quite wrong. I had to go the other way. Okay, let's take that back. See? Look at that cleaning up there. There's that. We are getting there. Okay, we're down to about a single line. Now I'm going to adjust the accuracy to bring it down. Okay, we still got a little bit of beat air. Okay, so when you adjust the bead error, you're, in this case, I'm moving it to the lever to the left, which is effectively shortening the hairspring, which makes it run faster. So when you do that, you gotta correspondingly take the arm down just a hair. Mm, that was more than just a hair. Let's go back. Oop, oop, oop. bit more. Oops, too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try that again. Come on, baby. Let's pull back up. Pull up. Come on. Come on, rock and roll. Let's, let's move. Okay. okay. It's going a little faster. I don't know why. I don't have to do this because, again, it doesn't even have the weight on it or anything. I just, it makes me happy to get a nice, flat, clean signal. Law of diminishing returns. I'm spending a lot of labor to try to dial in a watch that's been running for about 10 minutes. I have better things to do with my time. I'll do that after it's all together. Come on. Just give me some flat numbers, okay? Stop being a weirdo. These incremental changes are so small, I can't even see the lever move. I right, it's good for now. Right. I'm gonna get to doing other stuff. I'm, oh gosh, I'm nearly out of time for today, but at least it's running, huh? I am sorry about that chronograph wheel. I wish that, you know, I wish that hadn't happened, but what are you gonna do? I mean, the thing was, hadn't ever been serviced and somebody probably did a pretty gnarly reset on it without lubrication being in place because it hadn't ever been serviced and that was enough to knock that plate loose that's sad but now it's all better okay well it's got to run in i got to run it in and let it fool around and have fun and relax and all the things that watch movements like to do they do love relaxing, watch movements. People think of them as being sort of tense and sort of tightly wound, but wound up, but no, no, they, they can be calm. Pretty calm and steady if they're in good condition. Yeah. Good. Yep. Real steady. That's exactly what we want. Cool. Okay. Okay. 
New chronograph wheel is in, which you saw. This is your original hand. Uh, you'll notice it snaps right to top dead center, um, which is good. I was able to reuse that. And now instead of setting over here, because the hand tube was flexed, it's over here. Uh, there is a tiny strike pinpoint on the side of the hand over here. There it is though. Okay, I'm gonna let this thing, it's been, it's been a longer day and I'm, I gotta go upstairs and I gotta calm down. So, not calm down, I mean, I've gotta get ready for not being a watchsmith, but instead being, I don't know, husband and a father, I have no idea. It's been a long day. <clears throat> That's not the actual date, don't worry about that. I haven't set any of that stuff yet. Uh, I'm gonna let this run overnight, revisit tomorrow, come in tomorrow morning and we will, I'll case and then we'll be done. That is a nice watch. That is a nice watch. The loom and dial condition especially just make it. Uh, this, this dial seems to have, by the way, to my eyes anyway, a thicker layer of the top clear coat. And that's good news because the thicker that top clear coat is, the harder it is for oxygen to get through and start making those little dark spots. But it is just overall, it's just a great watch. Look at the colors on that thing. It's crazy. You can tell how dark the dial is um, because the, the indicator ring isn't faded at all. Uh, but the dial out of the factory just was that much darker. It's not a tropical, tropicalization or anything. I don't know why, but these gold dials in the 60s, they just, they're, they're, their color just, they could change from all kinds of different shades from, you know, light, light, light yellow to sort of butter yellow to, um, I, it's just crazy down to this sort of, you get this sort of grading towards orange thing. Okay. So, to avoid what happened to the chronograph wheel in this watch the last time, we don't ever want to reset when the hand is down here. No, I heard, I heard. It's dinner. Okay, it's great. Oh, are you making a video? Yep. <laughs> Folks, just hang on a second. Sebastian, I'll be upstairs in just a minute, okay? Sorry. Okay, this is real time, and it is dinner time, and it is time for me to come upstairs out of the shop. Uh, any case, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Sweep hand. If the hand is, I don't know, within about 10 minutes either side of top dead center, that, I, that's fine. I like to have it just past in here, and you stop it here, and then... That's when you reset it. So that to me is the most important thing more than, more than, I'm sorry. I just, I, that just really lost my concentration there. More than anything, whether it's stopping or starting, I think it's more important to be very careful about the resets. I mean, it is clear to me that that one hard reset or a few hard resets couldn't have been many because the chronograph bridge minute counter upper bushing wasn't deformed uh so it was probably only a could one or two hard resets that popped that hand off and jacked up the hand on this uh, your original thing the original tube that we don't have to worry about that anymore because i reset it uh and then also of course the you know that it, the chronograph wheel itself it's all better now All right, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you so very, very much.